So we saw in the last video how we could explain this photoelectron spectrum of methane at two sets of peaks. They both have vibrational fine structure. Why? Because they're both bonding electrons and they're in three to one ratio because we have six to two ratio of electrons in these orbitals. So that's for methane. Uh, we can now start to ask some questions. You know, how will the photoelectron spectrum, for example, change across the group 14 hydride? So as we go down on the periodic table, from carbon to silicon to germanium to, to tin. Well, we're going to need to construct the MO diagrams and think about what's going to happen for this, right? The atomic orbital ionization energies are obviously going to change. So we're changing the electronegativity of the elements. Remember, as we go down a series, the uh, elements are getting less electronegative, and so we have less ionization energy. And so in general, here you're seeing um, the ionization energies go down. There's a, there's a little bit of a, of a, a strange anomaly here with the 3s and the 4s of silicon and germanium. That has to do with the fact that um, there's some d orbital involvement okay, that, that causes the energies to shift. But generally, this is, this is true. OK. So <clears throat> if we look at the spectra here, we notice uh, some things. So these are four different compounds going down from the periodic table. First is that the bonding orbitals are less stabilized, right? So we have this shift where both the T, uh, 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 T2s and the uh, A1s here are going to less energy. Why would that be? Well, because we have lower ionization, right? And so if these are lower ionization energies, these orbitals 2p went up in energy and 2s went up in energy. Well, that means the corresponding molecular orbitals from which they came are also going to go up in energy, right? If this goes up in energy, this goes up in energy. If this goes up in energy, this goes up in energy. So that's the first trend that we see. Uh, the second trend is you can see that the vibrational gaps, right, the spacing between all these little bumps, is very small for stannane and very big for methane, relatively speaking. Why is that? Well, we have um, weaker bonds. Why do we have weaker bonds? Well, we said in general, heavier elements form weaker bonds. Well, we can also see that in terms of this MO diagram. I mean, if we're moving this up higher in energy, um, it's further away from these S orbitals of hydrogen. So if they're further away, less overlap, weaker bonds. Remember, you need, in order to have a good overlap, you need, you need the same symmetry but you also want similar energy. If you have the same energy, you have very similar energy, you have very good overlap. But here, you know, now we're going down the periodic table, the, the energy of this 2p orbital is going up. And so it's not gonna overlap as well with these S orbital um, so-called salts, symmetry adapted linear combinations. Okay. So uh, that explains, okay, so why, so then, you, so you have less overlap, weaker bonds. Why does that give you a smaller vib vibrational spacing? Well, that has to go with, uh, has to do with the formula that tells us what the vibrational space spacing is, this new formula, right? And K, it, we're saying is getting weaker. K is the bond strength. And so we have weaker bonds, less bonding, less overlap. Uh, so K is going down as we go down the periodic table. K goes down, nu is gonna go down. The other thing that's changing, right, is the mass, okay? <laughs> the mass is going up, obviously, as we go down on the periodic table. And so that is going to cause mu to go up. If mu goes up, nu, mu is reduced mass, nu also is going to go down, okay? So, so both of these things, k going down and mu going up contribute to the, the, vibrate, the change in the vibrational spacing that we observe. Then we also see something kind of interesting here, which is this spin orbit coupling triplet. You can see here, it's just sort of a mess. Here's a mess, here's a mess. But here, there's a nice triplet. Now, there's still vibrational uh, 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 fine structure in here, but there's a nice triplet. What would that triplet be due to? That's from spin orbit coupling. And we said that's a bigger effect with heavier atoms. So you really see it clearly with tin in there. Spin orbit coupling, if you have a triply degenerate um, orbital, in this case, it happens to be bonding, but it could be non-bonding or anti-bonding, you're going to get rise to a triplet. Okay, so you have a triplet, uh, you have a triply degenerate uh, MO here, so you get a triplet. Okay, now that effect is also playing out in these cases, but there's also the Jan Teller effect playing out that doesn't go so nicely into triplet, okay, or doublet. 
So, that, so the Jahn-Teller effect is a bigger effect for methane, lighter element, okay? Um, you can see germanium, it's sort of there, but there's sort of a combination of you know, spin orbit coupling and John Heller effect happening. All right, so this is what I said, the AOs, the atomic orbs are becoming destabilized, moving down, down the family. So then the T2 uh, is then further away from these one S's. So uh, overall, there's less bonding. Physically, this has ramifications. If you look at methane, yeah, you light a match, it explodes. It's pure methane and there's oxygen there. Um, but it's stable otherwise, okay? Unless you like heat it up, at least at room temperature, you know, it, it's stable. If you go down to silane, uh, this combust, combusts in air. So if you just, you know, spray some of this out into air, it's gonna immediately burst into flames. And this makes sense because, you know, we have weaker bonds. And then we're gonna get progressively weaker. Um, so if you go to ger germane, um, just just heating this, not not you don't even need any oxygen. If you just heat this, this will decompose. And then if you go to stannane, um, it's not even stable at room temperature. Uh, and then plumbane, okay, down to lead, is extremely unstable and was only very recently synthesized. You probably have to do some pretty sophisticated low temperature synthesis in order to to make this molecule and to, to isolate. It. All right, so that's uh, all I have to tell you about photoelectron spectroscopy.